no further questions. Thanks, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Clerk. We are on to uh, Jordan uh, Garfinkel, followed by Duncan Broke. Thank you, Chairs Needleman and Arcanti, Ranking Members Formica and Ferraro, and members of the committee. On behalf of Bloom Energy, I appreciate the opportunity to testify on raised bill 6524, an act concerning the solicitation of new fuel cell electricity generation projects. My name is Jordan Garfinkel, and I'm the Senior Policy Manager for New England for Bloom Energy. Bloom Energy manufactures a distributed power solution based on a solid oxide fuel cell that can be deployed at key locations on the electric grid. Fuel cells in, in general are also capable of running on renewable hydrogen. So an investment in fuel cells today is a down payment on the hydrogen economy. We appreciate Connecticut's longstanding commitment to distributed generation and its focus on ensuring reliability and resilience. And Bloom is generally supportive of the bill, but we have a few specific concerns. In some jurisdictions, regulators have combined procuring customer and grid resilience with the need to also achieve cost savings in the electric distribution system. And I want to give you an example. In New York City, Bloom worked with Con Edison to install fuel cells at hospitals, state agencies, and a low-income housing development. And the key here is that these projects targeted overloaded circuits, which were actually identified by distribution engineers at the utility. These projects avoided infrastructure investments of nearly a billion dollars in repair savings. This bill is an opportunity for Connecticut to use distributed generation to enhance resilience while at the same time avoiding costs that would otherwise be borne by ratepayers. The legislation previously included language around distribution system benefits, but it has been removed in the proposal. Briefly, I wanna to touch on bid preferences. We believe in this program, they should focus on how a given project will improve reliability and reduce system costs. Regarding brownfields in particular, this kind of a preference makes a lot of sense in the context of solar, where there's a real concern about using large areas of forests or farmland for solar panels. But those issues don't really apply to fuel cells since they have extremely small physical footprints compared to solar. We feel that the preferences should focus on evaluating which projects can most effectively bring to ratepayers the range of benefits offered by fuel cells overall. So we suggest the committee reinsert the language from the existing statute about providing distribution system benefits as well as consider a few specific bid preferences that touch on the demonstrated efficiency and reliability of a given technology, its ability to avoid transmission and distribution costs, the degree to which a project advances decarbonization of the electric system in Connecticut, and the extent to which a project enhances resiliency. And finally, we're concerned that the submission date to Pura of January 1st, 2022, will ultimately drive selections towards pre-existing proposals rather than projects that best serve the objectives of the legislation. Thank you to the committee for the opportunity to testify today and for the transparent nature of these proceedings. We've provided some additional detail in our written testimony. Thank you. Thanks, Jordan. Any uh, questions, comments, or meskers? Yeah, um, very simple and direct question. Your concern on January 22. Um, the filing. You said you were concerned about the deadline, in that the deadline is too short out there for plans? Uh, yes, sir. You could, okay, can you elaborate? So in the project timeline, and, and I keep in mind, I, I work on the policy team in New England. I am not a project developer and, uh, and I'm not an engineer. The, the Project development timeline is, is quite a bit longer uh, when starting from scratch, identifying sites and, and pulling together a project uh, than, than we feel is allowed with the January 1st deadline. And so uh, we, we recommend and we elaborate a bit in our written comments, uh, a bit extra time to, to pull together proposals for, for the program. Okay, and so your request, did you have a specific timeline you're requesting? Uh, the, you mean in the written comments? Yeah. Yeah, I think a range of, I think an additional six months is, uh, okay. is something that, that. That's fine. I haven't had a chance to go through all the commentary yet. That's why I was asking that. That's fine. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay. None. Thanks, Jordan. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> Up next.